Hello and welcome to this video on one of the more common enzymes. This is rennet, primarily used in the production of cheese. The mechanism and use of rennet is interesting and has found its way into human history for millennia. Cheese is an almost universal food. More than 35% of milk produced worldwide is currently turned into cheese or used in the manufacturing of cheese. In some cases it's a hard cheese like parmesan, in other cases it's a soft cheese like mozzarella. There's also your middle cheeses like cheddar. All of these start from milk. How you go from a liquid like milk and get a solid or semi-solid like cheese involves processing and enzymes. The enzyme we are talking about primarily is rennet. Historically at least, cars were used to get rennet. It's extracted from the inner part of their fourth stomach. The young nursing calves had to be able to break down milk, and because of this, they have rennet. Rennet is what allows them to be able to drink milk from their mother and grow. The stomachs themselves are a byproduct of veal production, and at least until relatively recently, there was enough production of both veal and cheese that the two roughly balanced out. More modern history has changed that. With a limited supply of animals, different cultural norms, and the ever-present and always known vegans, alternative methods have been developed. The most advanced involve microbes. Some molds such as Rhizomucor mehe are able to produce proteolytic enzymes, the same sort of enzymes that Rennet is part of. They're produced in the fermenter and then they're concentrated and purified to create the rennet that's used industrially. The traditional view is very different. Rennet's used to help bring it all together, and the coagulants used in that process create a bitterness, but also create a lower yield, or at least a lower yield relative to modern methodologies using microbes. Historically, calf rennet was superior, but with developments in technology and refinements of techniques to produce it artificially, the artificially or synthesized versions of rennet are somewhat superior, at least on an industrial scale. We've touched on just what rennet is, that is, rennet is a protease. Proteases are part of the enzyme family that will catalyze or break down protein from larger proteins into smaller ones or individual amino acids. This is what causes milk to curdle or form into clots. The breakdown of larger proteins causes the structure to begin to be disrupted, and it all comes together in a mess. Different rennets are available, and different cheesemakers will choose what they want based on their preferences. Overall though, the differences are not as important as what it does. It changes the way it clots, and that's specifically because of its proteolytic activity. Different rennets will hydrolyze or break down casein to greater or lesser degrees. This is what leads to greater or lesser yields from the milk. The more proteolytic activity you have, the more you're going to get curdling. The more curdling, the more protein you're pulling out of the milk. This means that you get more cheese out of your manufacturing process. This is further improved upon by the length of time the curd is left in contact with the whey and the pH. The whey is the leftover product after you take the protein out of milk. Some products you want in your cheese casein are soluble in whey and can be lost if they're not taken out early enough, but you also reduce the yield if you do that. The main action of rennet is achieved by being a protease, specifically the chymosin. Chymosin cleaves a particular casein chain called the kappa casein chain. This is the bulk of what you'll find in milk as far as protein goes. Breaking this up or cleaving it causes it to stick to other broken up casein molecules. This forms a bit of a mesh. Essentially, disrupting it causes it to bundle together even closer. This can be improved when you add calcium and phosphate. It's used by those who are making cheese from goat and sheep milk, primarily because, at least in the part of goats, their milk is phosphate and calcium poor. It makes it easier for the proteases to do their job and start breaking down the casein proteins. Looking at this at a much deeper level, 
you need to understand what the proteases are doing. Primarily, there are two steps. The first is the formation of the curd. This is where you're adding the rennet. The rennet begins by acting as an enzyme and breaking down the kappa casein chain. This disrupts the protein as we've mentioned, and begins by allowing the broken up bits to bond to other structures within the casein. This means that you have pulled it apart and start reassembling it without intending to. Think of it as a way some components that are magnetized taken out of a device will start pulling in bits and pieces and they stick to each other. This occurs due to the electric charge within the protein in order to balance itself out and lose the particular charges or at least even them out so that they're roughly consistent across the entire protein, it needs to bond to these other structures. Calcium has a role in that can act as a bridge or a catalyst for these reactions. Up to 80% of the casein structure is unbalanced. This means up to 80% of the casein will have to find something else to match itself to and fix this disruption. This is what gets you your first glutination or gelling stage. It's where you find your fats and other solids being held up. The second stage is aggregation. Aggregation is where you start separating out your curds and whey's. It's where the casein structures all come together, and that is what happens over time. But in order for that to happen, you have to make sure that you keep it below 65 degrees centigrade. Taking it above this temperature interferes with the ability of rennet to allow for the casein to bind together. Calcium, and specifically calcium chloride, can mitigate this. And so if you include it as a cheesemaker, you have more leeway in how high you can take the temperature. The aggregation step will continue over time, and the longer it runs, the more effective it will be. Of course, eventually it does run out of casein to gel with. It is worth knowing that the process by which you begin to coagulate and form the curd isn't possible with ultra-heat treated milk. That's milk that's been heated up above 90 degrees Celsius. Milk that's been treated this way can no longer coagulate because you've disrupted the proteins beyond a point at which even calcium chloride can mitigate the effect. Rennet is perhaps the most popular tool used for the breakdown of protein within milk to then produce cheese. This doesn't mean it's the only way. There are in fact many varieties of cheese that can be split up and divided into different families so to speak based on the way they have been coagulated. Rennet is the most popular because it very efficiently converts milk into a gel, and it does this enzymatically. It's why rennet coagulated cheeses are, by far and away, the majority of international cheeses that are available. Most countries will have some version of it. There are ways to make it using plant-based rennet and other options, and as mentioned, on an industrial scale, they're now using microbially produced rennet rather than animal produced rennet. Knowing something about the way it works and the things it does means you can use it more effectively. And if you're interested in making cheese yourself, you now have some knowledge about the things you can add to improve the reaction and get more cheese yield from the milk you're using. Thank you for watching this video. If you have found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, and suggestions that you have below.